So, I just came back from the post office. This is a video game machine that I've wanted since 1989. I'm pretty excited to have it. It is the Super Graphics, and here's my review. So, welcome to another episode. I'm really excited to do this episode. I've always wanted to talk about the NEC Super Graphics. I think this is such a cool looking system. And today we're going to go over the history of it and what this machine is because I don't think anybody remembers this. 1989. This machine came out. It was supposed to be the successor to the PC Engine. It was supposed to be called the PC Engine 2. But later on it was retitled the Super Graphics. Um, it was supposed to be, you know, a lot better than the PC Engine, you know, better graphics, better everything. But in the end of the day, it really wasn't that more, you know, it was more advanced than the PC Engine. It was moderate at best. Some of the enhancements were, um, it had four times the RAM. A second video chip with its own video RAM as well. The problem was with the Super Graphics was that in the end of the day, you know, the be-all, end-all life of a console is the games that were released for it. This system only got five games. The one thing the uh, Super Graphics had going for it was full backwards compatibility, meaning it could play the 700 plus PC Engine Super CD-ROM, Super CD games for it. Um, you could actually hook um, a PC Engine CD-ROM uh, you know, system in the back of it to play games on. So that was pretty cool, but for, you know, for actually using the system's power, as I say, only five games were released for it. And let's have a look at these games, because these are pretty cool. We have Super Ghouls and Ghosts by Capcom. Um, this actually is probably the best console version of Ghouls and Ghosts ever released. Uh, it is better than the Genesis version. Um, it's the only second par to the arcade version, obviously. But this was a game that was showing that the Super Graphics could do some trickery in there. Um, the music is not as good as the Genesis version, that's one thing. Here's the thing about Super Graphics games is, uh, they actually come with an outer sleeve. Uh, front and back there. And you actually take the sleeve off. And then, pretty well, it's a PC Engine looking game. You open it up, and inside is a credit card sized game. Like all the rest, it's not CD-ROM or anything like that. The next game up is Grand Zords. I've actually ended up with two copies of this. I actually had, I've ordered a copy a long time ago, a couple years ago. Strange. What Grand Zord is, is a side-scrolling action platforming type of game. It's very, it's not very deep. Something interesting about um, Grand Zord is, it used to be an anime before it became this game. And the anime was influenced by another anime called Wataru. And if anybody remembers that anime series, it was actually known as Keith Courage. Uh, on the Turbo Graphics when that was released as a game over here. Now the next up is Aldines. Uh, this is a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up, um, kind of like you know Gates of Thunder. Um, obviously, it was on the Hue card, so it didn't sound that amazing, you know, as, as like Gates of Thunder did. Um, but it is a really cool game, and it shows a little bit more parallax scrolling that the Super Graphics could actually do at the time. So next up is Battle Ace. You basically you're behind the cockpit of a futuristic fighter. Um, you know, shooting objects in first-person view, basically. It's not a bad game, it's something kind of to screw around with. Uh, it's, I don't really think it showcases what the Super Graphics, you know, was possibly capable of. But it's interesting. It's a very tough game, though. It's actually pretty hard. So last but not least is 1941 Counter-Attack. Another Capcom game. Um, yeah, you know, one thing that the Super Graphics and the PC Engine had a lot of was shooters. And this was, you know... Another one for the Super Graphics. It was kind of funny, it actually had three shooters in its first five games released. That's kind of entertaining. So, why don't we actually have a look inside at the Super Graphics hardware itself. If anybody wants to see the inside of the case, it kind of looks like this. This is all really mint, I'm really, really happy with this. So first things first, here's how to hook up your Super Graphics to your television. So here's what it looks like in the box itself. Here we are, this has got to be one of the most unusual designs of a console that I've ever seen. 
Do I dislike it? No. I, for some reason, I absolutely think the design is really, really, really cool. Um, your on and off switch is here. AB out is right over here. Power cord in here. Now, the very funny thing is, back in 1989 when I first saw this machine, I saw it in like a new type magazine. I'm like, what the heck is this machine? Uh, I just recognized PC Engine on the bottom there. So I'm like, oh, it must be the successor to the PC Engine. I was right, but what I couldn't figure out was where I plugged in the controllers. I'm like, where do I plug in the controllers on this thing? I actually thought at first maybe these things here, I plugged in controllers on the top. But no, that's not the case. Uh, the next thing I thought was maybe it's these things over here. Maybe these are the control ports and you click them open and put controls in. You could actually hook up six controllers. I thought that'd be pretty cool. That was wishful thinking too. In the end of the day, here's the controller port right in the, you know, in the front here. So here's the controller. Basic PC Engine controller, colored a little different, you know, just to match this up. So in the end of the day, only five games were released for the Super Graphics. Not enough for it to gain any form of popularity in any capacity. This machine quickly disappeared from store shelves. It's funny though, I'll talk about a couple of things. Um, there was an, another rumored game for the um, Super Graphics, and that was Strider. Um, there was supposed to be, it was mentioned a long time ago, in 1989, uh, in some PC Engine uh, magazines, it was mentioned that there was a Strider port coming for the Super Graphics. And um, everybody was kind of excited about that. Never came out. And, you know, word about that you know, just disappeared. So as a side note, something uh, interesting to mention was there was a few PC Engine games that you could put into the Super Graphics and they would play with enhanced graphics on this system. Um, one of the games was Darius Alpha. It is one of the rarest games on the PC Engine. Um, I believe only 800 of them are in circulation. And the reason for that is because it was a giveaway um, from something to do with, I think it was Darius Plus, um, the CD-ROM game and the Hue Card game. Um, you had to rip off coupons, send in the coupons with your name, and then they, the first 800 that were drawn out of a hat basically you know, would, would win. And uh, so it's a very, very rare game. I believe the last time I saw it up on eBay, it went for a colossal, like, ridiculous amount of, uh, you know, over a thousand dollars. So I'm a pretty happy camper. I finally get to own a Super Graphics. Um, you know, it's just one of those consoles that I always want to own. Did I want to own it because the games are so good? Um, no, not particularly, because the games are, they're adequate, they're okay, they're not fantastic, they will not blow your mind, but they're adequate and they're fun. Um, I just wanted to own the machine because, you know, I saw it years ago, and I was just like, I've always been such a big fan of the PC Engine, and to me, it is a bit of gaming history, uh, you know, with the Super Graphics. I mean, who's heard of the Super Graphics? Nobody has, you know? Um, people say, okay, you know, the 3DO they've heard of, and that's a pretty old system or whatever. But the Super Graphics beats that, hands down. And I believe it's just such a cool system that nobody's ever heard of. Um, definitely. So, I'm glad I own this system. Uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting. You got to learn a little bit more about what the Super Graphics was all about. And some of the, you know, the games that launched for it and were the only games for it. So, until next time.